Good morning, everyone, and welcome back Look to Money in the Law, My FM 101.3, with your host, Jay Marsden, Good from morning, the Marsden Chris. Law Group, and I'm John Drohan from Main Effort Financial, and you are the guy that I'm looking <laughs> at behind the camera, Tom Harmon from Holliston Hub yes. HCAT. Yes, yes. We are here in the My FM 101.3 studio, as we always are. Well, we talked about potentially not being here, but that's another story. That's right. We're here now. That's right. We've been here for upwards of... 12 years yes providing you you our listeners and you our viewers at home the over the, a the, decade's worth of free knowledge the quintessential the quintessential analysis and entertainment yes. that goes along with all things money and all things the law yes that's, absolutely that's what we do that's what we do uh jay you have been doing this now for over <laughs> over a decade correct tell me what do you what do you love most about money and the law what I love most about <laughs> money is the ability to spend it on things that, that I don't bring need. me joy in life. Is that what we're talking? Is that what you're talking about the show? Are you talking about the I'm actual? I'm talking about money. I'm talking about whatever you itself. want to talk about. But that's okay. Obviously, no, I, you're, I, 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 you're I, I, money oriented. No, yeah. I, this is well. This is what this is what I like about the show is, and this is what we hear from people. So this is what warms my heart. People come to us. People come into the come into the office. They come into consultations. We talk about what we're doing. We talk about what we're going to do for them, and what. What brings me joy is when people say, you know what, you or you and John, when I hear you guys on the radio, <laughs> take very complicated topics and break them down to a point where I can actually understand what's going on. To their simplicity. That's yeah. right. That's <laughs> right. It's a, no, but yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's, a, there's, there's a lot going on in, in the, there's a lot to unpack in these topics that we talk about on the show. And like I said, when people come to us and say, you, you know, I had the same exact conversation with another lawyer, another financial advisor, and I couldn't make heads or tails of it. And I came in and we talked to you. And in a half hour, I understood exactly what we were talking about. That's to me, that's the real value of what we do, you and I. And that's the real value to me of a show like Money in the Law, because we've talked about this on the show before. There's no end to the amount of research you can do. It's not like you're going to jump on Google, look up legal stuff, look up, you know, healthcare proxy power attorneys, and then you get a screen that says, that's it. There's no more. You've, you've covered it. You've reached the end of the internet. <laughs> there's, right? there's no more, no more screens to search. That's right. You, that, that's right. That's right. That, that's not what happens. You know, there's a whole bunch of pages on Google after the first one, right? They just don't tell you about them, right? Because nobody, nobody looks at them. Nobody looks at them. But they're so, there. So, so that's what I feel like. I feel like, you know, at some point, the discussion comes to an end, and people say, "I got it." And that's what that's been. The, that's been. We've talked about that from day one on this show. We've always described it as covering topics with you, our faithful listeners, just like we would cover them if we bumped into you at a barbecue and you asked me a question. And we've said, "Look, this is how I would answer this question if we were standing around having a beer." And this is how we're going to answer it for you right now, so you get it. You get it right now. I, I would. It, it is. It is as if I was st sitting, standing around, wanting a beer, but I don't have one. No, so it'd be. No. There would be a little bit. I'd be a little more antsy, you know, answering the question. I'd be a little bit more uh, hurried because. But if I had my beer. But if you had one, I mean, it's it's early in the morning. I would. Be there'd be no judging. I just want to let you know. There's no judging on this part of the I know, team right I know. now. Because it 10 would be. Is fine. Maybe it's a Bloody Mary. It I don't would be know. some sort of a tail. It would be. A, I would be that tailgate. Yeah, some sort. Yeah, there'd, there'd be a. There'd be a vibe. There'd be a vibe. There'd be a beverage and a vibe. I'm with you. Yeah. So you're right. The the and and this you know not even you know not even so much for the show. I mean, it's great that you know people watch and listen to the show but for for the the people that like your trusted advisors right like that's this is an important thing to look for is their job is to make you understand i mean their job is to is to make you is to is to make you happy right to sure. to, to help you achieve well, but to tell you the unvarnished to tell you the unvarnished truth right, right. you know that that's the oh i want to retire in two years not going to work not yeah. going to happen here's why Let's put a plan to talk about that. Yeah, that's what your advisors are doing for you. And and their job is to make you understand what it is that you're doing. I mean, yeah. how many times do we say, you know, I'll spend time with people just kind of reminding them 
of because the, they'll say, why am I doing this? Why am I not? You know, because they'll you know, they'll be at some other barbecue or by the pool and they'll say, you know, why am I not maxing out my 401k? Everybody says I should max out my 401k. Why am I not doing right. like, well, let me remind you that you have student loan debt that you can't afford it or you have right. children in college right now that you can't afford to. There's there's not enough income and, and you're spending too much money in order for you to max out your 401k right now. Right? Well, and the other part of that is we have also, and I, you know, we, we've talked about this before, we also are partners with other advisors. You know, you know, I, as much as it breaks my heart to say these words, I'm probably not the only lawyer that you work with because your clients have other lawyers. So it gives you the ability to say, You're look, definitely the most attractive lawyer. I get that all the time. That I get all the time. You're definitely, the, you're definitely the most fun lawyer. It's, these, it's yeah. these piercing baby blues. But what I'm saying is, that's and, and we do the same thing. We have clients that come in all the time and they say, look, we're working with this investment advisor. Great. You know what? We speak investment advisor. You speak it's, lawyer. It's right? crazy. Yeah. We, we, we can have a conversation and it's going to be a conversation that we don't need to translate what, the each, what each other is saying to each other because we play in this space all the time. Yeah. Not a big deal. You know, that better for the clients. And at the end of the day, you as the client, you as the consumer, it's your job like it's your job to kind of recognize that you you have to get something from this. You have to you have to be you have to feel good from everything that happens when you have these experiences with these advisors, with whether it be your legal advisor, whether it be your financial advisor. You have to when you walk away from that, you have to have a really you should have a really solid understanding and a good feeling inside, like that I am doing the right thing. And it's yep. their job to make sure that you understand what you're doing and give you the appropriate reasons why. That's just you know again I'm 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 kind just of your preaching. Two just your I'm, doing, two I'm doing a little preaching right All now, right. But, but it's important because you pay these guys, right? Yep. Like That's we right. get paid. You know we get paid to do. This. This. So, so if, if if somebody's if you're not feeling like that you're getting the that you fully understand, don't be afraid to raise your hand or make a phone call or text. Say, hey, listen, I, I don't understand that. Can you go through that with me one more time? And I, I believe me, I've been doing it my whole, especially with all my real estate guys and my and like my my legal when it, when we talk about like real estate and 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 purchasing real estate and that mortgage when we're doing oh. mortgages. I say, oh, you know what, I. I don't really understand what the interest rate is, and I'm just, can you just run it by me 11 more times until I know? Because, again, you know, this closing cost thing, what, what exactly are the yeah. closing costs? And we've said the same to clients. Look, I'll explain this to you 100 times, and, and if I explain it to you at some point and you say, I got it, tell me and I'll stop. I said, I don't mind explaining some of these concepts and some of these topics. Because <laughs> it's the over sound over of my voice. Again, like that it, yeah, there's it's that. my favorite thing, right? Me, <laughs> right? It's so hear soothing. hear myself talk. <laughs> but I'll say to someone, look, it's clunky. I get it. You know, we, And we've said this all the time. You may only do a handful of probates in your lifetime. You may only apply for Medicaid a handful of times in your lifetime. We do it all the time. Yeah. We do estate plans all day long. This is what we do. So if you have questions about it, we're happy to explain it. Now, if somebody's unhappy to explain it to you, you should be thinking, hmm, why are they so unhappy to explain this to me? Is this the right fit for me? Maybe I should be looking elsewhere. Anyway, so that, that's that's the point. We're just you know doing a little money in the law review for a, like yeah. the, you you early bird listeners talking and, about our favorite subject. And, and this us <laughs> ourselves. Do we do it better than? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're on part two. Or, this is part two of a show, I believe. Right? As we give each other. Yeah, it's part two. It is part two. What was the first chart? I was just going to ask you the same thing. I hope you wrote it down. Yeah, I, I do have it written down. I don't know if I have it written here, but the uh, it, it, it was the I forget now. No, you got to come out. You got to come up big. Otherwise, we have to go to commercial break and then come back and figure well, it out. Well, we can do that. I, I, I did have some. Tom knows what he's doing. Tom's Tom wrote got it. it down. Tommy's got it. Tommy's got <laughs> it. What do you got? Late start retirement. Oh, Bingo. That's late it. Yeah. start retirement. Yeah. See? Does that have anything to do with insurance, which is what I was prepared for today? Oh, the two, <laughs> the two, the two go together. Go like insur hand does insurance in, go with everything? Hand Doesn't it go with hand, everything? Hand in hand. So that. So thank you for reminding. So last week we were we were kind of we were talking about the late start retirement and or late start retirement planning. Correct. Right? So people who were they're they're like oh, I I just I I started too late. You know, for whatever reason, your fault, my fault, nobody's fault. I wasn't able to kind of get my stuff together. And and now I feel like I'm just in this where I, I shouldn't even I don't even have to plan for retirement because it's just a, it's a lost cause. That's right. And, that's and, right. And we're here to tell you that it's not. No, it's that not. Is, Absolutely so, not. So we can touch on that. But I do have some insurance. I, and and again, I, and I don't know why, but I'm I'm driving in and I'm like, so what are we going to talk about today? I forgot that we were going to do, you know. <laughs> but that's you know that's not here nor there. I, I thought we we thought we wrapped it up. But um and, and so I'm thinking about like okay. 
and I don't know why the ins- something I saw something that reminded me of insurance. Oof. And and then I you know I'm like well we've talked about insurance so many times on the show but I was like you know what it's not a bad thing to review. It's not a bad thing because you know, I mean th- I know there are some people that listen to the show every single week. So so they're like well yeah I remember we talked about that like three years ago. And there's some people that are new to the show so it's good to step in and maybe review some of these things that that I think are really important topics. And, and the only reason I say it is because it's come up in the, in recent, in the recent days and weeks uh, in the practice. So people have, uh, you know, I come across people and they have these, these insurance policies and they have these kind of insurance programs that they're in. And I say to them, and I try to be as diplomatic as I can, I'm like, and in so many words, I just want to say, you're wasting your money. You're, you're, you're putting, and I, you know, and I always phrase sure, it with, sure. If it were me, I wouldn't do it that way. Yeah, we could better deploy these resources elsewhere. Yeah. Yep. So, so, uh, so we could talk about that. But I definitely want to. I definitely want to wrap up and, and close up the uh, the late the late bloomer retirement uh, planners. Got it. Because that is a, that's a very important thing. And again, Jay and I are here to help you. We are we are we are your guiding light. To help you to your to, sentinel, as they say, to to take you to, to take you to that financial nirvana, whatever that is, and you can get there. You even if you've started planning late, it's okay. You're going to be okay. I'm telling you right now. All right, with a quick break, we'll come back. We'll close out uh, late uh, start retirement planning. We'll review our notes because I think we'll I have in. them here. That's yeah. right, and then we'll jump into uh, we'll jump into your insurance discussion. Yeah, good. very it's exciting, thrilling. All right, yes. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. My FM 101.3, Hollis and Hub, Jay Mars and John Droyan, Money in the Law. Don't go, don't go away. We'll be right back. Tom, what would we do without you? Thank God. Thank God. Oh, oh I, I just popped to my song list. Nice. Yeah, so this is, yeah, for yeah, someday. I got, I got one of those. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, you actually, the difference is you know how to play <laughs> songs. I just know how to say, oh, that would be a fun song to be able to play. All right. And we're back. My FM 101.3 J Marsden you, with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, Main Effort Financial. You didn't get enough time here in, that break, in the right? media center. Good luck with that. My FM 101.3. Tom is on the bag, and we are sitting here talking about. Well, we're wrapping up our last show. We had a two for show, talking about late bloomer retirement planning, getting a late started on your retirement planning. All is not lost. All is not lost. Um, and one of the things that we talked about that kind of kicked the whole topic off was, first of all, let's just address right away that you, you, you're starting late, right? So let's kind of set your expectations accordingly. That was one of the things we talked about. You know, let's talk clarify about- Clarify your expectations. Well, clarify yeah. your expectations and say, look, you know what? Okay, you got a late start. What does your retirement look like, right? Because the answer might be, you didn't get as late a start as you thought you were going to get. Your situation may be such that you may be in a position where you're going to have some lifetime income, either from Social Security or pension, that makes this work out better for you. Uh, if you got a late start, you might be working later, which means you're probably in a better position to take the max and then some Social Security because you might work until 70 as part of your plan and you might not need to start Social Security then, which means you're going to get a better benefit. So th- believe it or not, there might be a couple of positives that come out of this thing. So that's what we're talking about as part of the show was if you get a late start, what do you want to do? What's the way to handle it? Well, you brought up a good point earlier in that is is that you you're you know you're talking to your advisor, talking to whomever, and you kind of get this realization or kind of this epiphany that you know what you you think that your retirement means that when you turn sixty five because your old man retired when he was sixty five that you're just going to stop working yeah. because you're going to at that point you're going to collect your social security because you don't really understand how social security works and and in your mind like that's what you're going to do because that's what my dad did and that's what his dad did and sure, yada, my yada, dad yada. had a pension and the numbers worked out and so, he was supposed to get out at whatever age yeah so the first thing is is to get a clear picture of exactly what your retirement can look like and what and more importantly what it can't look like yes. so yes so it, especially if you're coming at this late that you know that and and people get kind of hung up on the numbers or the age right sure. you, you must see this you see this all the time where like well 65 well that's uh, you know that's the that's retirement that's age. you know and, like, and like it's like there is a retirement age right like that's the, that's retirement age yeah right? that's the it's ingrained and kind of like just kind of throwback from like that was like when the that was the pension and and years ago that's when social security would start is it 65 yeah. that's when pensions would start and most a lot of people their retirement was based on pension or social security or that like guaranteed income so 
you kind of, you know, the first thing we do is say, okay, let's let's be realistic about what your what about your timeline here. Sure. You know, and then you know the idea of Social Security, and that's the next thing that I wanted to to address on this is getting a full understanding of. of of what Social Security can do and what Social Security can't do. Well, and, where we where we left it last week was the idea of if you take it early, you have to deal with the game of how much can I work, how much can I make, how does it impact the taxability of my Social Security, and so that feeds into what we were talking about earlier, which is well, if you're gonna if you if you're gonna keep working and you're not gonna take it, then we can take that issue off the table. Yeah. And then you, you streamline one of the issues that you're gonna deal with in retirement. Yeah, and, and that's a sometimes that's a little bit of a bitter pill for people to swallow is that you get this, but well, wait, if I start taking it now, then I'm gonna be able to, I'll, I'll make up, you know, it'll, t it'll be nine years before I before I break even, so I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting more bang for my buck now if I start taking it now, and you're like, yeah, but you don't need it now, right? right? You right. don't need it. And that's the rule of thumb is you take it when you need it. And if you don't need it because you're still working, and oh, by the way, if you're working and you're making more than $18,000 a year, then guess what? That's Social Security that you decided to take early. Right. You're getting taxed on it. $1 for every two up above $18,000. So you're kind of giving money back to the government where you really shouldn't be doing well, that. Well, and if your plan was to, and we talked about it again, if your plan was to work in retirement anyway, then that's part of the calculation. That's part of the analysis. I'm not saying that that's the way to do it, but that's the analysis, right? Okay, I'm going to work anyway, so I'm not going to take Social Security at 62. I can absolutely wait till the age of when I'm not going to have a problem with it. And I'm gonna, because I'm going to work anyway. It doesn't yeah. matter, right? So do I need it? Yes. Would it be nice to have? Sure. But I don't need it to the point that I'm going to give, give it back to the, to the government. Yeah. So here's how we do it. Here's how we do it down at, at 747. So it's, I get it. Like people be like, yeah, you know what? I really want it. You know, but the money's right there. I could just grab and take it. And you're like, I know. And so, and, and so you got to kind of play along with it. You're like, yeah. oh, I know. Look at it. It's right there. It's so it looks, exciting. It looks, I mean, can you imagine if you, got an, free. if you got an extra 1200 bucks a month, what you would do with that? Oh my God, I could do it anyway. I could buy that <laughs> boat. So, so yeah, go, go with it. Like play. Yeah, that would be great. Now listen, and I go, all right, let's, let's do it. All right, let's do it. And then right when we're about to do it, I'll be like, okay, hold on, hold on. Just let's hear me out. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know what? The, right now, it's March. It, it's well. It's November, right? It's November. Do you really need a boat right now? Like this isn't the time, right? Yeah. You're not gonna. What are you gonna do? We're gonna store it, right? You're gonna do that, right? Where's the boat show? So you know what, exactly, show? exactly. Let's wait. The boat show's not until January. Let's do this. Let's kick this thing down the road. Six months. So right, we're meeting now. It's November. Won't do better, you know, like March, maybe April. Let's meet in April. Figure it out. And we'll talk about it. We'll talk. And you know what? You know what happens if you wait? That month, that number is going to go up. Every single month, it's going yes, to go up, and you can. Better. And then we say, "Hey, you know how you do? You know what's really fun to do is go on ssa.gov, yeah. right? Log in, get your social security. If you, you can, love twelve hundred. You know what you're really going to love thirteen hundred. Yeah, you know what you're going right? to love more than twelve, thirteen. Right? Yep. Exactly. Yep. Right. Yep. And right. I have done this with so many people for years. Like, I, you know what? Hey, wait, wait a minute. Didn't you get a bonus? You don't necessarily, right? If you, why don't you use the bonus for the boat? You're almost at $2,000. And then, you know, a month. you know, right. If That's you, a better boat. If you wait until, if you wait until February 1st, guess what? You're at $2,000. That's twin Johnson. That's Johnson's. That's right. Twin Think Johnson's, about it. baby. Think, right? Yep. 2000 and then, yeah, and then, and then, oh, you know what? And then, but, and then, then you get to the point where like, you know what? After, when do you turn 67? Yeah. In August, well, full Social Security is a month away. There's no, you're not getting taxed on any of that. Yes. And then you get your full benefit, full, and that's what they call it, right? In Social Security, it's full retirement. Yes. But it's not the most. It's not the no, most. No, the most is if you right? keep waiting. Because if I'm at full, and people get, I'm at full retirement. Yeah, I can make, I can make a million dollars. No one's taxing my Social Security. But if I wait another two months, it goes up. Well, and you know, I'll tell you, it's funny. People come in the office all the time. We sit down, we talk about. Medicaid plans, we talk about state plans with people, we talk about all these different things. And and you have, I'm sure you do, and in your mind, you have an idea of what you think most people's Social Security is, right? Because yep. you've talked to enough people that you say to yourself, I think I know what the Social Security numbers are. And in a lot of cases, we'll, we'll, and we'll say to somebody, yeah, I, so help me, help me out, Social Security, that's probably what, 2200 a month, right? I, I, your, your wife gets 1000 bucks, whatever. And they're always surprised at how close we are to the number. Right? How did you know that? They're always like, oh my God, that's almost spot on. And I go, yeah, yeah we've, we've done this a couple of times, right? <laughs> but, but every once in a Do while, every once in a while, somebody will roll in the door 
and I'll say, so what's your uh, what's your social security number? Twenty two hundred bucks? Twenty one hundred bucks? No, it's uh, thirty two hundred bucks. I'm like, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! That is a sit up and take notice yeah. number. Yeah. Okay, and right away, without even knowing, I know the reason. Right? Uh, you waited, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I was working. I didn't need the money. Blah blah. And and it, and it like I said, it's a sit up and take notice number. That's why it's worth having a real live conversation to say, I know I get it now. And again, but there's a whole bunch of ways to calculate the break even, the this, the that, the this, the that. But Social Security is supposed to be a floor and it's also a hedge against your longevity. That's what it's there for. So if you can get more, I think, I think, I mean, we always saw talk on the show, the theory has always been more money is better, right? I think that's well, right. More money is better because it gives you more options. Yes, it does. More money is better because it gives you more flexibility. More money is better because it allows you to be able to make some choices or be able to kind of to to prioritize things differently uh, because you have that you have the capability. It's one less thing that you have to worry about. Yep. Yep. So now, and I get I get that you're going to crunch numbers and you're going to say, well, if I if I take the larger number on my life expectancy is this, I'm going to get this much money over less years. Blah 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 blah. There's a whole million ways to do that, and that's, uh, that goes back to your idea of do you need it, do you want it, or are you going to wait and use it as kind of its, in, I think it's, in some ways it's intended effect, which is, look, this is a floor. This it, is a floor. It's time. an income stream, yep, right? And, that, yep. and that's what it, it's an income stream, and, and so when we dumb it down, we say, look, would you rather have $2,200 or $3,000? Just, just, that's your question, and yep. the answer is per month, and you say, well, I... Uh, this is kind of a trick question. Doesn't feel like it. Three thousand dollars, of course. Yep. So like, okay, so you can wait to that, and then you know what? All of that money that you would have gotten per month, the twenty-two hundred dollars you would have gotten per month, yeah, you could have saved that. You could have invested that. You could have done something sure. with that. But at it's, that, but it's you, like reality. But would you, you have done that? Yeah, and right, and and there's that. There's that potential too. But the question is, do you need it? Right. You know, and and when you get to the point where it's like kind of you know, and and we joke around and say we we you know we try and you know wait three months, wait six months, but that really works. It does. That make really a, works it makes a because difference. because there you may get to the point where I may get to the point as your advisor and be like, okay, you know what? If it were me, I would take it now. Yes. Like yep. I would do it now because you need it because you're not working because it's so so the factors that they line up and then and because then it's like well if I if I take it at sixty six or 65 and I get $2,700 a month. Right. But if I wait until 67, it's $3,000 a month. So then you ask the question, is that $300 a month, is that a game changer? Is that gonna change your, your glide path? Well, that's a great point. We try to remind everybody, it's not- it's To not, my point. To your point. <laughs> it's not 62, 67, 70, right? It, it, there's all kinds of points in between those numbers. Oh yeah, they're called where months. We, where, it just, where it just might make sense. There's all these units of time, right? Yeah. Where it just might make sense to say, you know what? I, I, I thought I was gonna wait till 70. I, I'm not gonna make it till 70. It's, it's gonna be 68, 69. You're still getting more money, yeah. right? So it still makes sense. So to your point, every month you wait, it works out better. And then there's a whole, we've been talking about social security. There's a whole other way they calculate this too. So if you look at your social security earnings on, a, on, a, on, a, on like a cliff, the longer you work, those earlier years drop off, mm -hmm. and that affects your, your, your the amount of money this you get in Social Security. That's right. You earn more money as you get older. You so know, most of the people do. So when you were, you know, when you were that strapping 18-year-old lad working at a, you know, grocery store, <laughs> yeah. making a whopping, you know, painting houses, two thousand dollars a year, four thousand dollars a year. Your first job out of college paid eighteen five. You're replacing if you wait longer and keep working. You're replacing the eighteen five number with your current income number, which is hopefully more than 18.5. <laughs> and so that changes the calculation. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why making, uh, waiting could make more sense. Yeah. I, I mean, I was just, I was just reminiscing about working for, uh, for AJ painting, you, you know, they had, you know, we're in down in Danbury, Connecticut, scraping the, you know, scraping paint all around power lines and stuff sure, like, why not? yeah. And I was getting paid, I think like $6 an hour, seven, Whopping. maybe seven. And it was, uh, it was, it was real money at the 10 time. 10 bucks an hour, my first was, construction job. I mean, yep. right. Yep. What'd you, you didn't know what to do with all that money. I was like, that. I'm, I'm <laughs> a pile of dough here. That's right. This I, is it. I'm rich.
Yep. Ladies, I'm rich. <laughs> You're looking at a rich man. Yep. Yep. All right, yep. we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to uh, dive into this a little bit more, and then we're going to go into some more insurance. Dive into insurance. And we're, we're, and we're, are, we're also going to talk about Tom, because I know Tom's sitting there like, Social Security, Schmoschel Security. You know, like, I, I've heard of it's that. It's not, not going to sure be around. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll talk about that too. All right, don't go away. We'll be right back. I love the commercials. And we're back. My FM 101.3. Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group, John Drohan, Main Effort Financial, and we are talking late getting started retirement, right? Kind of, you finally woke up one day and said, oh, wait a minute, um, I'm not 18 anymore. I got this retirement thing hanging out there. I probably need to get on this. I've been a little bit neglect, and, uh, and I need to figure out what my, what my plan is going forward. So we just rattle off a whole bunch of ideas around Social Security, when to take, when not to take, do take it, don't take it. Um, so we took care of that piece of it so you can put so, that one in your pipe all right so so and just to, one last thing with social security oftentimes we get the you'll you'll hear this as well uh I, social security i'm going to be not around gonna be not so i'm going to be so i'm not even to work so so that's a that's a valid concern sure i think and that you know of course anything can happen you know yep. in the world right so it's it's one of those things where is it likely no it's not likely. And, I, and, you know, speaking from a financial kind of like, you know, being in the industry for quite some time, I don't think it's likely that Social Security is going to go away. Could Social Security change down the road? Like when we were referring to our pal, our young man, young Tom here yes, is in there. That's right. Could Social Security change or be adjusted for when Tom is in the Social Security world? Like meaning like could they make the because they've, they've changed the age, right? They've yeah. changed the Social Security full retirement age. Could they change it? Could they make it even older? Could they push it to 68 or 70? Of course, that could happen. Sure. So, again, understanding what Social Security is, is as Jay describes it as the floor, I don't think that's going to go away. I, and again, I can't speak for the no, federal obviously. government, sure. but I don't think that's going to go away. I think you're going to, there's going to be that baseline floor. I think there's always going to be, that's always going to be there. But the important thing to take away from this is that you can't, it's not, Social Security is not designed for, it's not built for to be your entire retirement. It's, no, it's not, not. It's not designed for you to hang your hat and say, oh, now I'm collecting Social Security. I'm on Medicare. I don't need anything That's else. That's right. We're not friends. And, and if you and if you and if you live in this area in the in the in the greater you know Massachusetts Metro New, West, yep. New, New York East Coast West Coast, you live in those places where it costs a little extra money to live, just because it's everything's expensive, then Social Security is not going to be the. It, you're going to need more than that. It's not. It's not an income yeah. replacement tool. It's yeah. Not. And the other thing to keep in mind is, from a political perspective, the older we all get. In some respects, the more protected the benefits that we've already earned could be mm -hmm. because older folks tend to vote, right? <laughs> so because As you they, well know. Because they vote, um, when they tinker with these Social Security formulas, they usually push the pain of the tinkering onto those newest to the system, yeah. right? So when they make these adjustments, it's usually, okay, everybody born after 1996 now has to wait until they're Welcome 70 aboard. to collect their Social Security. But you guys who are within striking distance of Social Security age and do know how to get to the polls, we're gonna leave your benefit alone. Everything's like, good for you. Tom's like 96, I was born way before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 97. Yeah, he was 90, born like 92. Nine, that's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, so if, you were, if, you're in that, if you're in that zone, if you're in that cycle, um, those are the things that you see. Those, that's the reality of the way the world works, unfortunately. Okay, so, so, so what's the next thing? So, the, so all right, I, I, I got it. I, I, I'm going to get Social Security. I'm going to wait as long as I can to take it or whenever. I'll take it when I need it. Sure. So, and let's say I'm, I, I'm just, I, I don't have a lot of money saved up, but I live somewhere. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm for, you know, because I'm one of those people, I worked hard, and I, I have my residence. I yep. have my house. So what are, and this is another one of those things where, People, they hear about this, and we've talked about it before on the show. We've had people come on the show and actually kind of talk about the, the idea of it, is using your house, using your residence as a, uh, to, uh, as a form of- a source in, of income. As a source of income to be able to help augment your income in retirement. That is, that is potentially something that could be, uh, could be advantageous for you to do. And this is called a reverse mortgage. Yeah, and don't run screaming from the room, right? Don't run for, you know, we, we recognize. <laughs> we're not reverse mortgage guys. That's right, right? we're not yeah. selling you this. Yeah. But, but I can tell you, we've used them to great effect with clients in certain situations. We're not saying that, you know, we're a hammer, everything's a nail, and this is the solution to everything. 
but we, we talked about this last week on the show, which is if you have a home, you have to decide, is my home a home or is my home designed to be a resource that I can use to help secure my retirement, my lifestyle in retirement? And the answer in many cases could be yes. I know that it's your home. Everybody sees it as a home. The rest of the world sees it as an asset worth maybe $500,000, for example. So yes, you have, it's not a mutual fund. It just happens to be real estate but it, ser it could serve the same purpose. Yeah, and there's that whole mental piece of it where this is my home and I've, you know, I've worked hard, I own it, right? Yep. I, I yep. don't owe the bank, I don't owe anybody anything. And I don't have a, you know, I don't have a million dollars in my retirement account or in my bank account. So this is what I, this is my legacy. This Correct. is what I want. And this is the, the home where my children grew up. And, you know, many people feel this way. I mean, me included. Like, I, I feel like this is, you know, we were talking about, so, you know, we could, what if we move or we're, we're going to, we're going to, like, we, yeah, we're yeah, not going I anywhere. I know, you know, it's hard. It's hard. So, so, so if, if that's the case, understanding, like getting a, a, an understanding of that is, is very, very important, especially if you're in a situation where, you know, your advisor or somebody may recommend, say, listen, you need more income. You need more money to live. There's only a limited number of places where this can come from. One of the places could be that you could take a reverse mortgage and, and augment your income Correct. from your property. And then, and like Jay said, people run screaming from the room because of all the things that go along with reverse mortgage. So now, I, I no longer own my home. Right. Now there is a, now there's a loan against my home. I spent home. 30 years paying it off. Now I'm going to go the other direction with yep. it. It really doesn't feel right. So I, I don't, I no longer own my home. And oh, by the way, the reverse mortgage, I mean, my interest rate, the, the loan I just paid off, my interest rate was 3.3%. And now the, the, the reverse mortgage interest rate is 10%. Right. And I'm like, what? That's insane. And, and so you, you totally feel like you're getting snake oil salesman here where you're getting ripped off. And, right. you've, and it's right. like, um, but that, this is, understand that the, like the mechanics of a, of, a, of a reverse mortgage. The thing about a reverse mortgage is it's not like the, the reverse mortgage, the, the, the bank is giving you money. The and the, the banks don't give out money unless they, they feel comfortable that they they'll be able to get loan. they'll yes. be able to get that money back. Yeah. So the money that they're giving you, it's not based on your income. It's not based on 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 your your job because when you apply for a loan now, let's say you're applying for a mortgage. If you're applying for a mortgage trust, what does the bank look at? They look at your your income. They look at your how much money you have saved up. They look at how much money you're going to put down. They look at the value of the property. They, they look, look at the condition exactly. of the property. Exactly. Yep. And they say yep. they say you are we we feel comfortable that that you will be able to pay back this loan. Right. Therefore, we will give you this loan, and therefore we will give it to you at this interest rate. So, and whatever the going interest rate is based on the federal interest rate, and say, all right, here's the, the going interest rate is five percent. We will give you this loan at five percent. Reverse mortgage is different. The reverse mortgage, they're not basing this on your income. They're not basing it on how much money you have in the bank. No, they're not basing it. On, the only thing they're basing it on is the value of your property. Right. right. And you'll continue to own your property. They'll just have a mortgage on the property, just like they did when you bought it the first time and you were paying the bank to own the property mortgage free you'll still own your property but that mortgage gets recorded at the registry of deeds just like the original mortgage that you got does yeah and and the other piece of it that, that of course that banks look at is they know how old you are they they understand like kind of what the so be, when someone's taking a reverse mortgage there's a reason for it there's a yeah. so and so the so there's there's strict regulations that you can't get a reverse mortgage when you're 30 years old because right. the bank's not gonna they 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 know you're not gonna the, the value of your property there's that there's that your value of your property is going to go up and down based on the real estate market well, so there's this actuarial calculation being made that says, look, this is this all factors into how much money we'll give you. Yep, and and it also factors into what the interest rate is because the if the the bank will charge a higher interest rate, and this is the whole like thing with credit scores and things. The bank charges a higher interest rate if they deem that it's a higher risk Correct. of you not paying them. So so in order for in order for you to secure this loan, you have to be able. The, the bank says, okay you know our our you know our all of our smart guys you know with the glasses at the end of their nose and their slide rules they figure out and they say the the risk for the for us to lend you this money is greater than a different risk so therefore we are going to charge you a higher interest is your rate. number yep. yep is your number but think about it so you're coming at this and you're saying to yourself my concern was that i wasn't going to be able to retire okay well we just talked about it. if you're going to work and you think you're going to work for a while then may, waiting to take social security might work now the house that yes 
I'm sensitive to the idea that you wanted to leave a legacy to your family. One of those legacies to your family could be self-sustainability, right? You don't become a burden to your family because you're concerned that you didn't save for retirement. So the way you leave that legacy to your family is you use the resources that you've accumulated, your house in this situation, to create another um, leg in the stool, if you will, for your income in retirement. And then you could have a um, you could have a reverse mortgage that is paying you out on a monthly basis, whether you do an, a, an annuity type of payment from them, or they give you a checkbook and you just write yourself a check every month. But that is now adding to your Social Security income. Now you're building yourself some consistent stream of income to live your life. Yeah, and that's important. And I, you know, to your point, um, the idea of being self-sustaining, because when we, you go back and say, okay, there's, I have a limited number of sources of income that I, and one of the sources could be my children, yeah. you know, I, or, or to augment my, or, or to augment the, the cost, my cost of living because it costs money to live. Yep. So that's, so it, it, on the one hand, if you're, you know, if you don't, if you're like, look, I'm, I don't want to have a reverse mortgage, yada, yada, yada. And we've, we've seen this in the past where, where we've actually done this, where we've had, uh, where we had one of the children, one of the one of the adult children was well off and, and financially solvent. Um, and so they kind of did the math and they said, look, you can do a reverse mortgage because you, you need more income. That, right. The bottom yep. line is you need more income. You can do a reverse mortgage uh, or you can go to, you know, to the Bank of Jane. And 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 so the, they, they kind of weighed it. And, you know, their 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 daughter said, you know what? I'm willing to loan you some money again, and and you sure. know it was all done legally. So it was that it was so now they're getting money from their from their child as opposed to taking a reverse mortgage. Your kid may not be in a position to do that, or you may not feel comfortable doing that. No. So so the reverse mortgage might be the better option now. And here's the here's the and Jay kind of touched on this, but the saving grace about the reverse mortgage is you still own the house. Right. You st so all it is it's a loan against your it's a loan against your property. And you can and you by the way and you can pay them off. Right? This is the other thing we try to tell people all the time. Scratch can, that lottery you can, ticket. You can get a reverse mortgage. You can use it for income at some point down the road. You can turn around and say, you know what? My lifestyle has changed. I'm not spending as much money as I was five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. My health has changed. Something's happened. And now I actually have a little more income than I thought I was going to have because I'm not spending as much money. You can throw money back at your reverse mortgage. So it's not a one-way ticket to I'm loading up my home on um, another mortgage again, this could be a window of time that you're looking to fill. Somebody explained to me the other day, they were like, your go-go 60s, your slow-go 70s, and your no-go 80s, right? That and I was like, awful. I was like, oh my God, yeah. but, but there's a, there's the a modicum, in my mouth but, but there's, the a modicum of, there's a modicum of truth to it, right? As you get older, you're going to slow Don't down. Don't ever say that. You're not going to spend Don't as much money. Don't ever say those you're words You're not going to spend as much again. money. So there's a window here where the reverse mortgage may not just be this one-way street where you're just saying to yourself, I'm just going to be drawing down the value of this asset. That's one option. The other option is you say to yourself, you know what? I've talked about this with my family, and we've decided as a result of you know, long-term care challenges that we think we might have to face down the road, I'm going to move in with my family members. Right? We're going to build an in-law apartment. Whoa, we see this all hold the time. on a second. We see this all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, we're building an in-law or we're building out a space in our place right. to be an in-law. So your $500,000, $600,000 house that you thought you were going to hang on to, you're selling. You're using some of the equity in the house to build onto a space that's going to become your forever adult home. Adult child in-law. It's adult it's, child it's, in-law. It's, it's, it's like it's I like study for the exam. You study for the quiz. And, and that's a real, um, it's a real value add. And a lot of people do it. They just don't tell you they're doing it. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, my mother's living with us. My father's living with us. We had a space. We did a build out. And now he gets the money. She gets the money. Plus, they have their Social Security. Plus, they're living with us. We keep an eye on them. They can keep an eye on us. It's a team effort. Yeah. And, and, and that's going to solve any health care challenges going forward because we'll, we'll be able to take care of each other. Right. We're bringing the family unit back together. That works. In a lot of cases, that works. Yep. So the so the again the the one of the one of the stumbling blocks or kind of one of the things where we, you know we kind of bump up against the wall is the whole legacy piece. Yep. So this is where you talk to somebody like Jay Marsden, where he's going to sit there and you're going to say, but I'll have a, now I have a loan, blah, blah blah, and then Jay Marsden will then say to you, okay, 
let me just understand this. So you have a million dollar house, you're taking a $200,000 reverse mortgage. And then when you pass away, when you're 110 years old, even though you were just sounding like you were the Grim Reaper a little bit well, ago. It's, yeah, it's, it's part of the business. Yeah. We have to. So, <laughs> so when you pass away at 110 years old and your, your house, your million dollar house has a $200,000 loan on it and your three children, that this is the house they grew up in. Your three children, that's their biggest problem in life right now is to figure out what to do with that $200,000 loan? Right. So what? It'll get yeah. solved. It'll and, get solved. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're going to keep, they're, they're going to have the house and they're going to they're gonna do what they were going to do with the house whether they, whether they owned it completely or whether they had this loan. That's not going to, it's not a game changer. That's right. That's so right. if you, so if the, if your concept or your, in your mind or in your heart, you want to leave this house to your kids, guess what? If you leave your house to the kids with a little bit of, with, with, with a loan on it. A little bit of a mortgage on it. Let them deal, deal with it. Not a big deal. Let them deal with it. That's their biggest problem in life, then let them deal with it. Well, you bring up another great point. One of those points is that it, th this is a personal decision, obviously, but it may be a conversation that you have with your kids, right? I mean, this, this. This is something sure. that you, that you yeah, but I'm saying like the big picture conversation, which is, hey guys, I, I started my retirement savings a little bit late for a whole host of reasons. We talked about this in the show before. Some of those reasons were, I, I put everybody through school. I was about to say, right? I started, right, you're, wear, you're wearing like all of like the college, like the, you know, the swag oh, you that you, swag. right, you got your Syracuse shirt on, you got like your, your UMass University of Alabama swag, right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, I got my, uh, my, yeah. my UConn yeah, hat on. Bowden hat on, yeah. you're so like, yeah, just, so there's a reason, right. that, so there's a reason to get when, a late start. When you, when you have that conversation, that's what I recommend you yes, do. Yes, we're swag all your up. gear, we're all your gear, up, we're the right. merch, put the and, merch on. And make sure one of, one thing that you're wearing is a headband, just because it makes you look like you've been working out, right? Some wristbands. Exactly. <laughs> and you say, yep. look, guys, so yep. I'm, 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 I'm glad we can all get together. UMass Amherst wristbands. I'm trying to highlight the reason why I got a late start on my retirement. I'm sure that maybe you could guess. I can't think, right? the outfit I've worn why today. Why don't I have any retirement money? That's right. Yeah. That's right. But if you, but seriously, if you're going to have this conversation, have the conversation and say, look, for a whole host of reasons, right? I got a late start in retirement and I'm trying to pull together a plan can we talk about some of these issues and how this looks and how this would might work so that I can make some great decisions going forward for myself and for everybody in the family? I'm trying to leave a legacy, but at the same time, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not impoverishing myself. Let's make sure that we keep all of our options open and that we're flexible. That's the idea. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm still stuck on the picture of you where... Wear all your college all my merch. Yep, all your college merch. And I mean, I look, just coming in. Hey guys, listen, I just want to talk to you guys about dad's retirement. And <laughs> look, it's either that or your show, but just a barrel. You know, there's your barrel with a couple right, of straps. Barrel on with, it, like, with some suspenders yeah, on them. Guys, yeah. there's a reason I'm a, a reason I'm out of cash. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to Niagara Falls either. You know, yeah. None of those student loans that you're paying, there's a reason for yeah. that, right? So yes, this is the issue. You want yeah. to think about these things. Uh, that's but right. yes. I thought I was doing okay, grad school. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a real re so there's again there's a there's a this is it depends on the family dynamic I get it you know we're being cavalier about it but but yes if you if you a lot of people are not comfortable having that conversation I get it no, nobody wants to go to the kids and say I dropped the ball in time I understand that but there may be real reasons yep. that benefited your family in the long term that you say guys we made a conscious decision here it impacted our decision here and so now we just need to figure this out and this is and this should be part of the conversation you're having all the time anyway because we always encourage, if, if you can, kind of this open line of communication around money, finance, long-term care, who's going to take care of who, what's going to happen. This is part of that discussion. So this brings us to the final point of, the, of this article. Go. that we Speak the we're... truth. So the fi at, at the end of the day, it yep. doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how well, how soon you plan for retirement or how late you plan for retirement. All that's going to matter to you or what's going to matter to you far and away the most, more than anything else, is your health. Yep. And as and, and Jay can attest to this because he deals with people who are in like some an advanced age and this is on a regular basis. So, you know, you have somebody who walks into your office who's 80 years old and they're in pretty good health. There's something to be said about yeah, that. Yeah. There's and 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 at the end and whether they're still working, whether they're, you know, still, you know, they 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 didn't save that much for retirement or they're they're still trying, they're still figuring out, they waited to take their social or whatever whatever their story is, that's what matters the most, right? So when you when you're when you're kind of getting all caught up in like and beating yourself up about why well, I didn't save or I, I zigged when I should have zagged or I made 
at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Right. I mean, it's it, you're you're gonna your retirement may not be what your dad's retirement was. Sure. Your your retirement may not be what you thought it was going to be. It may not be. It may not. You, you must have. You may have imagined yourself at down in Key West, like lo lounging on like that. There's a, a beach about as big as this desk, but you know, yeah, lounging in a lounge there. chair, yeah. right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It, very, you know, in, in Florida or somewhere, and 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 sipping a uh, a cocktail and and playing cards with your friends. Your retirement may not be that. No. Right? It, it, may, it may not be. Now, that the, decision may be taken away from you through no fault of your own. Even if you saved every nickel and had yourself teed up for a phenomenal retirement, life might sneak in there and throw you some curveball from a health perspective, and you may not know what you have going on. So the, I think the key is the, pl the plan. Be willing to embrace the idea of the plan so that you can take as much control as you can. Be willing to embrace that idea exactly. Like, Take as much control as you can, and and prioritize your health. Yeah. Like prior, prioritize your health over like so. So if for instance, if your retirement, if you're saying, well, I'm going to skimp on my, I'm, I'm going to get like the bare minimum Medicaid, you know, supplement in order to so I can help, you know, pay for something else or spend money somewhere else. I'll turn around and say, no, 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 your health matters far more. You need to go to the doctor. You, you need, to, need get, to have good doctors. You yes. need, yeah, you need to, you need to be in a, in a position where if something were to happen to you or if your health changes, that you can deal with it because at the end of the day, you, that, that's what's going to be the most important thing. So, you know, people, we, we encourage people, you know, look, if you're still working at 67 or, you're still, you, or there's a requirement for you to still work at 70 and you can do it, then that's by the grace of God. Sure. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what? And, and you're still, you know, you're, because how many of your retiree people still work? How many people, like, they, they work because, or they, they, they're involved in something because they, because they want to be. That's right. They're very know? engaged. They're not sedentary. They're not couch potatoes. They want to be out and about. They're doing things. They're keeping busy. They're engaging with their contemporaries because that's what you, that's part of, for many people, that's a big part of what they want their retirement to look like. You know, it's not just, to, it's not to your point, it's not work and not work. Yeah. It's not work and then sit home all day. It's go do stuff, go entertain yourself, do the stuff you do on vacation. That's what we talk about all the time, right? They're just doing it every day because every day is vacation. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's so, I mean, there's an, an immeasurable value about, about your health kind of into your retirement years that, that, that far outweighs money. Sure. You know, yeah. you, know, you, you ask somebody who's got, who's, who's saved, you know, Five million dollars and has and have has a dual pension, and then they come down with some some serious illness. They'd give that all away. Oh, they give it all away. They give the pension away two seconds. They give health. it all. Yeah. They'd give it yeah. all away to be able to feel good or to be so 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 so. Don't take that lightly. Don't yeah. take that. Don't take that for granted. Uh, in in your you know as you're you know as you're kind of oh, I started late and you're kind of have all that angst. Look. The last thing you need to have is a heart attack about you know because you felt like you started saving too late. Right. No, we're right. we're we're here. We're as two non-medical professionals, we're here to <laughs> to, to assuage that that uh, that anxiety and to make you understand. Like, look, you're going to be okay. And most important, the most important thing is your health. The money piece, you'll be able to figure that out. Well, and we and again, we talked about that. You have options. You know, you can. There's nothing wrong with having an A plan, a B plan, and a C plan. Right. A plan could be you continue to work till you go to your final reward. B could be, well, I'm going to wrap it up at some point down the road. And C could be, I don't want to do any work. Lay it out for me. What does it look like? And then one of those options would be, well, if you don't want to work, then the house comes into play. If you do want to work, some of the house comes into play. If you keep on working, the house doesn't come into play. Okay, now I know my options. Now I know. Now I can make some educated decisions about where this thing goes. Yeah. I, love I love it. it. I, uh, great way. I, I yeah. love it. All right. Yeah. All right. So... This is the end of the show. I know. You, yeah. you, you save your insurance speech for next week. Yeah, yeah. The insurance yep. will, will be, and it'll be important. It'll be an important. I bet it will. And, and it kind of needs its own show. Anyway. And Tom will probably remind us next week, guys. Insurance this week. <laughs> yeah. Insurance is As what you're talking yeah, about because this week. we're. Yeah, so he'll write it down. Thank God. Of, yeah. God so, bless him. So this is the part of the, like the TV show where they start rolling the credits, right? They yes, start, they do. And they start and they say. Uh, Jay Marson's wardrobe brought to you by, you know, Brooks Brothers and yes. John Duran's wardrobe brought to you by his Adidas. closet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. By Target. Yeah. Not a sponsor. Uh, so, but, but, but uh, this is what I was, I want to throw. So John, I just recently got a haircut, like today, a haircut. So my hair, so if you're reading the credits that are rolling, John's hair brought to you by my man, John Sousa at Samson and Delilah. Simino. No, oh, Sa okay. Samson and Simino Barber in Hopedale. Go see my man. You John. drive to Hopedale for haircuts? 
it's literally, it's right over there. It's, yeah. it's like less than three minutes away. So, of course, I go to Hopedale All Fair right. because I go to that guy. All I right. go to John Souza. Right. So, they promised that they were going to have this rolling on Saturday. So, John, if you miss this, shame on you. That's right. You shame had your on chance, you. John. Yeah, he did. John, right before my haircut, John showed me. He, he, he comes running in with a bag from his, his previous customer. And it was, I go, what's that? He goes, it's a gift. And I go, for me? And he goes, no, for me. And it's this like two gallon bottle of like some homemade Portuguese red wine. Ooh. And he's like, yeah, he goes, uh, this is my, this is for me, this not you. This is for you. me, not you. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. All right. So uh, shout out to Johnny and uh, shout out to who cuts your hair? I go right across the street downtown. Oh, you're, the, oh the Holliston Barber. That's it's, right. It's a five iron from the office. That's yep. That, yep. I mean, that's, that's, that's less than a five iron from the office. For me. I mean, for your five for iron. For me. Yeah, for me. For Tom, it's, Tom, it's Tom's, a wedge. Tom, 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 yep. Wedge. <laughs> Tom's chipping from there. Yep, right? That's yeah, that's right. That's right. Tom's chipping to the cup. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Remember, any questions, go to moneyinthelaw.net. Uh, also, remember, this is all part of the Holliston Hub. So if you're, if you're interested in more, go to the Holliston Hub website. Suggested HK. topics, topics you want to hear that we haven't covered, let us know. Yep. We'll be happy to talk about anything besides ourselves. For and again, change. right, and we are, and this is Money in the Law, and we are, at, once again, one last reminder, we're on MyFM 101.3. Love it. The local station, all about local. So support your local everything. Yes. Support your local everything with these guys at MyFM 101. All right. All right, we'll see guys. everybody next time. Have a great week. All right. Have Take a care. great week. God bless.